Howdy, it's Jim Morato at the Lincoln Boyhood National Memorial in Lincoln City, Indiana. And this this is a, a really, really nice site managed by the National Park Service. There's a museum inside of that very ornate building right there in front of us that's closed at the moment because of COVID. And they're actually doing some, uh, some work in some of the other sites that kind of uh, print, prevents access to, to some of the things to see here. T yeah, we stopped by one morning just because it, it had been a little while since I'd been here and I wanted to go back. Yeah, just, just because. There's really three main areas associated with Abraham Lincoln and where he lived. There's Hodgenville here in Kentucky. There's this site in Indiana, which is where he, Abraham Lincoln moved after you know him and his family left Kentucky. And then there's Springfield, Illinois, which is where uh, Lincoln basically established himself and kind of came up through the political ranks and eventually became president. But this is a very underrated and underattended spot. You know, it's, it's kind of in a secluded area. It, it's not that far from Holiday World in Santa Claus, Indiana. So, you know, if you're in that area, you could definitely combine this with your trip to Holiday World. It's, uh, it's that close. And there is also kind of a mirror state park. Just, um, man, just right down the road from here. I mean, maybe a mile or two. It's, it would definitely be walking distance. If you were hanging out here and wanted to take a nice little walk, the state park, there, in, in the state park, there's a little church, which uh, the Lincoln family attended that church. It's It's been rebuilt since the Lincolns were there, but it's the same church. And his sister and her husband are buried right next to the church. I'll put up another video about that state park, though. But I, I just wanted to say a little bit about this particular park because uh, because I like it quite a bit. There, like I said, there's a museum on the inside and a gift shop that wasn't open on this particular day. Then there's a Pioneer Village just up the road a little bit. You can drive or walk there. Last time I was here, I walked. And then there's also a cemetery, and in that cemetery is the tombstone for Abraham Lincoln's mom who is buried I believe in that cemetery somewhere but they're not they're not sure of that exact spot and there there is a post office in here I've been to it before on this particular day I didn't see any real signs to it and it wasn't opened I'm not sure if it's still there or not they did have kind of, they did have their restrooms open and they had like a little um, a little box with pamphlets and inside the pamphlets uh, in, inside that box and over by the restrooms, they had, uh, if you collect the National Park passport stamps, they had some little pre-stamp stickers that you could take for your passport book, which I thought was pretty nice of them to do. And, and like I said, we're, we're actually driving over towards the Pioneer Village, which th right now with COVID and actually at this time of the year, they don't have any of the, um, you know, kind of Pioneer dressed actors and presenters out. But you can still kind of walk around the village and you can see the uh, kind of cast stone area where they they uh, where they know the, the Lincoln family lived. So you, you can actually go to the site where the Lincolns had their home, which is really nice. A lot has been made about uh, Lincoln's mom who died of uh, milk sickness. And the, uh, actually on a little brochure that they give you at the park, there's a little bit about the milk sickness. Milk sickness occurs when cattle graze on white snake root, uh, a shade-loving plant that grows in the Ohio River Valley. The plant, the plant contains trimetol, a poison to animals and to humans who consume milk products or meat from those animals. And of course we process milk and we take care of that now, so that's, that's not a concern of modern society, but it definitely was a concern back then and it did take the life of uh, of Abraham Lincoln's mom. Just, uh, yeah, there's there's a little bit, you know, the, the nice little brochures they give you when you go to the national parks, there's a little bit about this particular park. It talks about the Living History Farm and the things to do at the park. Lots of nice little trails. And we, we uh, 
we actually park here and then kind of walk over to that little pioneer park but I'm gonna read just a little bit from this brochure about the Lincolns and, and how they got to Indiana Abraham Lincoln revered among the greatest Americans was shaped in large measure by his years in Indiana the people he knew here and the things he experienced stayed with him throughout his life a sense of honesty pursuit of education and learning respect for hard work compassion and notions of right and wrong were born of this place and time in the fall of 1816 Thomas and Nancy Hanks Lincoln packed their belongings and children and left Kentucky their Kentucky home for a new frontier in southern Indiana oh I wanted to mention too we came across this little railroad track and I was hoping to catch a train I always love seeing a train but we did not see one today and I was thinking does a train even still come through here I left some pennies on the train track and I came back later uh, several hours later and they were still uh, not smushed so I assume a train does not come through there often but if you know otherwise let me know anyway back to uh, the brochure arriving at his 160 acre claim near Little Pigeon Creek in December Thomas set about building a cabin and carving a new life from the wild region as Abraham described the largely unsettled Indiana woodlands in much of the work Thomas was assisted by his son as he grew older Abraham increased in his skill with the plow and especially the axe he later recalled how he was almost constantly handling the most useful instrument oh and by the way we are coming up on the um this is where the lincoln house was and i believe they sort of made a cast of uh, the foundation that was left so this is kind of a cast of what was there at the time uh, i believe before it uh, disappeared to the elements so yeah, the Lincolns lived right there. That kind of gives me goosebumps thinking about it. And going on with the brochure. For the first two years here, life was good for the Lincolns. In the fall of 1818, when Abraham was age nine, Nancy Hanks Lincoln went to help some neighbors ill with milk sickness, and she became a victim. It was a tragic event for the family. The first of many losses, Abraham would endure over his lifetime. Thomas and Abraham made a rough wooden coffin for her burial, and the family said their last farewells to their beloved wife and mother. Within a year, Thomas visited Kentucky, where he married Sarah Bush Johnston, a widow he had known for years. Sarah brought into the household her three children, uh, a wagon load of furniture and many books. Sarah proved to be a kind stepmother. Under her love and guidance, the two families became one. In frontier Indiana, opportunities for formal education were few, and there was endless farm work. In total, Abraham spent about one year in a classroom, but he loved to read and could often be seen carrying a book as well as his axe. By age 16, Abraham was tall and muscular with a keen intellect. Joining in informal political discussions at Gentry's store, Abraham honed his debating skills. In 1828, he got a job piloting a flat boat loaded with produce down the Mississippi and Ohio rivers to New Orleans. There he saw a slave auction on the docks, an, an experience that greatly disturbed him and one that would, he would never forget. Two years later, the family left for Illinois, where Abraham spent his next 30 years. And it goes on uh, just about his life some, but yeah, so, oh, and we're, by, by the way, we're walking to the. Uh, water source that the family used which is just a little trail not too far from that little pioneer village yeah you can see where they got their water and it's just a nice little walk there's another trail that I haven't done in this park where there's 12 stones trail of 12 stones trail guide walking distance one half mile and there's a stone from various points in Lincoln's life and there's a little brochure about that. I'm going to have to do that next time I'm around. But we wanted to see the spring on this particular visit. Again, railroad tracks. Though we did not see a train this day. And we only saw maybe a couple of other couples the whole time we were here. 
which again this is uh, just such a great isolated park and it's so secluded and yeah it's a very has a very nice country feel we saw joggers going through the park and of course we've we've been to Springfield several times too that's that's kind of a mecca for for Lincoln fans and I just feel like this little park does not get the attention it deserves and just looking around at the fields where uh, Thomas and Abraham would have done a lot of their farming right through here and to me that's very exciting uh, you know, looking around and knowing that there was the the store and everything, there was so much Lincoln-related history here. I'm, I'm going to have to Google and see if there's a map of other Lincoln sites near here. I know, you know, Rockport and some other places, there there are some other Lincoln sites, but there's got to be more. And just because we couldn't get there on this particular day, I wanted to include a photo from another trip of uh, Abraham Lincoln's mom's tombstone, just so you can see that.